name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. This time of year for the Holy Orthodox Church, the first two weeks in September is always filled with lots to celebrate liturgically because it's during this time that we celebrate and that we commemorate multiple feast days every year at this time. On September 1st, the church celebrated the beginning of another new ecclesiastical or church calendar year. Then on September 5th, we commemorated Zechariah and Elizabeth, the parents of St. John the Baptist, and on September 8th, this past, past Wednesday, we celebrated the birth or the nativity of the Theotokos. And on the next day, September 9th, we remembered her parents, St. Joachim and Anna. And in two days from now, we'll celebrate the feast of the elevation of the precious and life-giving cross an event that took place in Jerusalem in the fourth century. And we're already beginning to celebrate today together on this day. And those feasts are celebrated within the first 14 days of the month of September. And all are celebrated as a reminder to us as Christians of a very important theological truth as we begin another church calendar year together as a Christian community. And these multiple celebrations come to us this year at no more appropriate a time than right now. Because we're living through a period of time that's giving rise to much confusion and frustration and fear and distraction. And we're also remembering this weekend the 20th anniversary of the tragic events that unfolded in our country on September 11th in the year 2001. And as Father George mentioned at the end of the sermon in a few minutes, we'll offer a very special prayer, praying for the memory of all those who perished on that day and praying for the continual healing of those who were wounded, and praying that God continue to give strength to all those who lost a loved one on that day. However, if we think about it, this year is no different than most other years, because there's really nothing under the sun that ever changes. There's always something in our lives or in the world that may give us reason to pause or that may raise the level of anxiety within us. Personal and worldly struggle always exists to some degree. The cause may be different from year to year, but there's always something serving as the means of distraction for us. So the church uses these first two weeks in the month of September to celebrate these collaborative feast days as a way to remind us as Christians that although the struggle of this life are very real, the truth is that the world in which we live is far from a hopeless world. Because this world was created by God, and this world includes God, despite how some people in the, living in the world today may try to dismiss that fact. The world includes a God who created human beings in his own image and in his own likeness. And although this world has indeed become corrupt, to the, to the reality of sin and the reality of being separated from the God who created the world, there is no greater truth for the world than for us to remember 
that there's nothing more or nothing less that God desires than to be reunited with us and for us to be reunited with Him eternally in His heavenly kingdom. Because the truth is that the world in which we find ourselves with all the corruption and with all the hate and with all the division and with all the war and with all the uncertainty and with all the fear is not the world that God created it to be or that God ever intended it to be. It's true there are lots of distractions in the world and there's lots of division and there's lots of brokenness but despite all of that we can be comforted by the fact that we still have a church that upholds the truth of who we really are as human beings and that we still have a church that has not forgotten the reality of God and that we have a church that here's, that's here to help guide us and to help ground us as Christians and that's here to help give us hope because we are people of hope regardless of all the chaos that may be present at any given moment in time in the world around us. So on the first day of the ecclesiastical new year on September 1st, the church reminds us of this hope, the hope that comes to us at the start of every new beginning, and the hope that comes to us as Christians at the start of a new ecclesiastical calendar year. The new year gives us an opportunity to reevaluate our lives and shift our inner attitude away from the hopelessness that we often feel living here in this world. And it gives us an opportunity to refocus on the hope that comes from the risen Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, reminding us always to give thanks to Him for all things and to glorify Him always for all things because God is with us and He will never leave us. And then the feast day of Saint Zechariah along with his wife Elizabeth, the parents of John the Baptist, on September 5th, the church reminds us that it was Saint John who was the one that preached a message of repentance and that it was him who preached a message of hope to the world around him, reminding them that the kingdom of heaven is not some far away place, but that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. And then on September 8th, the church commemorates the birth or the nativity of the most holy and blessed Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, reminding us of the hope that we have to reach our full potential as created, living, and breathing human beings just like she did, living a life in full obedience to God and living a life of humility and living a life that allows God's will to be done, not only for our own benefit, but for the benefit of the world around us. Then on the next day, on September 9th, the commemoration of St. Mary's parents, Joachim and Anna, reminds us of the hope that just as God eventually heard the prayers of these two great saints, blessing them with a child, St. Mary, in their old age, God does indeed also hear our prayers and answers them when we humbly call out to him in supplication and when we make our requests known to him. And finally, on September 14th, this coming Tuesday, as we commemorate the feast day of the precious and life-giving cross, the church reminds us of the hope that we now have 
because of what Jesus did for us on that cross. The cross is no longer a symbol of fear and humiliation, but the cross is now a symbol of faith and a symbol of strength and a symbol of love and a symbol of salvation because of God's triumph over death. And the cross is now a symbol of union with God eternally in his heavenly kingdom. It's that precious and life-giving cross that gives us our ultimate hope that God's eternal paradise is now reopened to us because of God's ultimate sacrifice for us. And then, in the gospel lesson that we heard this morning, always read on the Sunday before we celebrate the feast day of the Holy Cross, we heard those famous words of hope spoken by Jesus Christ himself to a man named Nicodemus, the same man who would later bury Jesus' body after he died on the cross, saying to Nicodemus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in these few simple words that we always hear on this Sunday, during the first two weeks of the new church calendar year, the church is sending us a clear message of hope reminding us who live here in this world, a world that in many respects has unfortunately seemed to have lost its way, that we are not at any moment in time ever living without hope because of what God has done for us. These are words of hope given to us by Jesus Christ himself from which we should learn to live our lives. And these are words given to us by Jesus Christ himself by which we should be sustained as we struggle throughout our lives. And these are words given to us again at this time of year, along with the celebration of so many feast days for which we should always find our ultimate hope as Christians and as human beings. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but shall always have everlasting life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.